In this case, you don't even need to formulate the question. I can see where it's coming from. Um, you, you tell me if, if, if I'm... I'll, I'll try to respond to that. See where it takes us, where it takes you. Have you heard of the concept Rasa? Rasa. 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 Uh, emptiness? No. Oh. Rasa is variously translated, but it's very rich in connotations um, term in Sanskrit. Rasa means many, many things. For instance, if you study Ayurveda, there is the science of Rasayana. The whole alchemy, the whole Taoist alchemy is based on the science of Rasayana. Though they use different terms for that. The term Rasa is of tremendous importance. And I gave example of Ayurveda only because you might have known about it, may have heard that Rasa. Yeah. I yeah. But Rasa also translate, translates as taste. You see? Taste. And this is when it is really imbibed with lots of connotations. It's that taste. It taste, you know? Being able to extract rasa from this existence, it's literally savoring life. So rasa plays tremendously important role deeper within the philosophies of India. And it's given a, a very important um, treatment in the works of Kashmir Shaiva masters. So that what you speak about, that aesthetic experience, it's literally, literally that quality of rasa that every experience is available to, but based on the ability to extract that. Right? It's to extract that juice, the essence, not even juice, but essence, and rasa is that essence. If you look up in the Sanskrit dictionary into English, you will see rasa will have many, many different uh, seemingly um, unrelated connotations. Like rasa is that what is an un used and understood as Ayurveda, in Ayurveda, right? right? That essence of plant life. Rasa. And Ayurveda uses that, a precise knowledge, sort of to combine plants in a certain way, but they have that effect on organism that not only, not only supports the, our organism at any given uh, moment when it needs that support, but it enlivens the inherent intelligence of the cells. And yet rasa also has this connotation in arts. Rasa. Uh, have you heard the term rag or raga, like Indian raga? Yes. Musical term. It's a form. But also raga is a mode. Mode of expression. So rasa is that what is being invoked by raga. You see? So something that wants to come into form that has that gives us the aesthetic this aesthetic response. Is that would that be reasonable? Okay, let's everything is reasonable. <laughs> when we speak of rasa we don't want to start it's like speaking of poetry. We can have a manual, right? Which tells us the law of poetry writing. But does it mean that that manual will let us to write sonnets? Shakespeare did, for example, Milton's Paradise, you know, sky's the limit. So let's just, let's not, let's just not yet turn in this discussion into manual making. Let's just remo remain in that very fluid, very, very tentative mode. I know you. Your question is beautiful and you're eager to pinpoint. But maybe then Rasa will escape, you see. So that what you speak about, that what you're addressing, that what you're asking about is, yes, we could say also that Rasa 
is literally, literally rarefied through the process of that aesthetic delight, through the process of the digestion, that aesthetic delight which brings consciousness back to its original state. One could say that is rasa, and the different degrees, different varieties of rasas, you know, the tradition, you say, from 8 to you know, 16 or something, each a certain mode. Even the rasa of like Atmos beauty, right? In the presence of a beautiful tree, a beautiful animal, a beautiful creature, a beautiful being. And I'm just talking about physicality of it. I'm not even talking about beautiful, la la la, let's just be deep. You know, look at a beautiful man, a beautiful woman, a beautiful child. There is rasa in it. You see, we're taken by that beautiful. You know? And there is the quality of rasa which is associated with terrifying experience. The rasa that invoked by terror. I mean, then there would be no ancient Greek drama, there would be no ancient Greek tragedy, right? But with the development of theater, forms of, yes, they were born. Apparently, I've read somewhere, I've heard somewhere, I don't know where exactly, maybe stumbled into it, and don't hold me to the way exactly it came from, but that nothing else been done. Like, no matter how new the Hollywood movie comes, you know, how all this is regurgitation of the existing formats that the Greeks came up with already. You know, there's a comedy, there's a tragedy, there's a tragic comedy. comedy. All these forms have been explored, presented, and out, outli outli outlined to give us that cathartic experience. Yeah, I remember Joseph Campbell talks about Mm -hmm. And that's an, uh, an archetype. That's, he, he discovered that archetype in all the different cultures of the literature. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think a lot of the writers in Hollywood would consciously use it. Sure, no so doubt. Like, yeah, absolutely. That's, to make it gripping, mm -hmm. it has to have these elements. Mm -hmm. That rasa, you know, that aesthetic experience, literally derives from our ability to transcend that what is obviously presented to us in a wrongness of any particular experience, where either through skillful manipulation as that, as a performer, as an artist, or as a discerned spectator. And in that concept of rasa, that triangle, that relationship between the artist as the creator of any form of art, the experience of the self and the spectator, or the object of art itself and the spectator, that triangle is always intact. So, from that stand view, you know that spectator is the one who makes the work of art alive, if you will. Artist did his, her job. But it is then, it is then in the domain of the receiver, in the domain of the one who perceives that and gives it life. Because that is the one who extracts rasa from that experience. So essence of aesthetic experience, that essence of the aesthetic experience is that rasa generated through <coughs> generated through certain application of certain, let's say, coming together of certain ingredients whereby 
what I spoke earlier today, you remember when I was speaking about the example of the artist, it is the skillful handling of the raw matter that this raw matter of the elements undergoes that rarification, purification when it is being transformed into something which then becomes a work of art. But it does not only ends with the working of an artist. It is then available, available to the one who undergoes any experience as the spectator. And that is the nature of aesthetic experience, is to being able to extract rasa from any particular experience. And when we speak of aesthetic experiences, usually associated, associated with arts. Right. Well, then again, you know, the art of living encompasses in itself all its fields. So really, artist is not artist is not a nine to five job. And the love of beauty, right? in all its forms, including terrifying, is not, it's also not a nine-to-five job. And that's probably happening all the time anyway, but just, just to be aware, in other words, there's, there's something that we're navigating with through life, there's something that's pulling us, and we can talk about it as we go with it, as in terms of desire or intent or something, um, but that <coughs> don't get lost now. Okay. Don't don't wander. See. Wander or wander? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Just like don't wander away. Like you want to pin it down. Right? You kind of want to I feel you you want to summarize it. I guess I'm just recognizing that sensibility more and more as as a as a as I say, a compass of some sort. So, yeah, this has been a significant. You can see it as a compass, or you can see it, you know, and in itself. Because the very nature of that aesthetic experience is very much that. Being able to extract rasa in the context of what we speak now, it's literally that. It's savoring this existence in all its glory. So other than seeing it as a compass or direction yet that takes you somewhere, it's that which actually gives you that utmost sense of being in the present moment. It's the quality of attention as well. Because our attention is so scattered and so surfaced, surfacey. Because the life itself is becoming faster and faster and faster and more mechanized and, you know, and everything. So if this, let's say, is not developed, it's very easy, very easy to just simply being deprived of that experience, deprived of the ability to savor each moment as it is for what it is. And I'm speaking from the position of an artist because you ask the question. You know that. That's what distinguishes real artists from someone who just, let's say, thinks that you know, being an artist is doing this. It's, it's ultimately being present to what unfolds at each and every moment. Yeah. That's more where I was going. 
there's a, there is a honing in on something, or mm -hmm. maybe that's not the right word, but um, a recognition that's available in any, in any given situation or moment. There's something that wants to be almost like laid on the nervous system. It seems that way. And that that response, I guess that's the way I'm trying to talk about it, but I think you're helping me clarify that. It's maybe just as simple as the desire for <laughs> smell of roses. Shall I pass the Yeah, let's pass the word. In other words, it's not just enough to open up. Flower has to be offered fully. The same with every experience. Deeper meaning of puja, and you know what puja is.